Hi, this is Nicole Rivera, and you're listening to the Stop Writing Alone podcast. I'll be honest with you, this episode is not going the way I had planned. I am back in the Artist Way reading group with uh, Sam Kimberly's group, the Creative Life Scholars, and I've got morning pages going again. They're on my mind. I'm doing them every day, and I wanted to do this very produced episode of reflecting upon morning pages, what they mean to me now, what they've meant to me in the past, and pulling clips from episode two of the Stop Writing Home podcast and reflecting on everything that uh, I said back then in reference to how I'm feeling now. Um, But that's not happening, and here's why. I am currently speaking to you in the dark, (laughs) wearing a headlamp, because we are heading into day three of a blackout here in my house. Um, That tropical storm, Isaias, I never even got the name of it, to be honest with you. Uh, I wasn't really paying attention, not thinking it was that big of a deal. It, the only time it got on my radar was when we were getting ready to leave for Florida, and it was pointed out to us that there was a hurricane on the East Coast, and maybe we shouldn't be driving. I said, okay, we won't, we won't pack our bags just yet. So we stayed home. By the time the storm reached uh, our home, it was a tropical storm, but it packed a doozy. It was really um, something else. So we lost our power. Luckily, everything else is fine. Um, But here I am recording on my phone that I keep charging in our car (laughs) and uh, hoping that I can do something for you this week. So the topic is still morning pages. And part of the reason that I wanted to uh, do another episode on them is because they are such a widely powerful tool for me. Really quick, if you are not familiar with the term morning pages, this comes from Julia Cameron's The Artist's Way, which is a 12-week program organized into a 12-chapter book. Um, you can do it all on your own. I highly recommend doing it in community. I'm a stop writing alone, but I'm also a stop reading alone person as well. Uh, and this book is one of those that it is, uh, highly beneficial to be working, uh, even with just one other person, just to have an accountability partner as you go through, uh, the 12 weeks. Um, And there's lots of different activities that Julia has us do throughout the 12 weeks. But there are two things that um, are consistent throughout the program. And one of them is uh, called the artist date, where you sort of give yourself an hour a week to play. And the other is the morning pages, which is a commitment of every single morning waking up, opening up a notebook, and writing longhand for three pages, just a brain drain, just letting everything out of your head, just writing as fast as you can, not stopping. And it sounds like a nothing sort of activity, but as I mentioned in episode two, right when I got started with this, with the, this podcast, the first thing I wanted to talk to the community about was the power of morning pages. This weirdly mindless activity is a powerhouse not only for your creativity but for your productivity for your mental health all these different things so one of the things that has sort of come up over and over again each time I've done the artist way is what exactly did Julia Cameron mean by three pages because especially when you get into community, there's a back and forth. It's like, well, is it, you know, three single-sided pages? Is it three pages back to back? What are you doing? What size are these pages? And on and on, the debate roars. So I should preface this by saying that this year, when I'm going through The Artist's Way, I'm also reading um, 
another of Julia Cameron's books, which is The Artist's Way at Work, Riding the Dragon. Uh, it's similar. It's just geared towards people uh, in business. And since I'm working toward building the Stop Writing Alone business, I said, well, maybe I should see what Julia and her partners, because it's actually co-written with Mark Bryan and Catherine Allen, see what what is this? This seems like the perfect kind of like business book for me if it's going to be within the frame of the artist's way. And so when I was reading the section to get started in the first week where they're explaining morning pages, I'm reading it through and I'm thinking, oh no, this sounds like I've been doing morning pages the wrong way. And I said, I can't, I just can't keep doing this. I need to know the answer. And now typically I wouldn't reach out to Julia Cameron um, online because she's not really like a a digital person. She's very, you know, uh, live events and, and this and that. But due to the pandemic, she started doing virtual events. And I said, you know what? Even if she's not online, she must have somebody working the website right now. So I went and actually wrote an email to JuliaCameronLive.com and just asked directly, what does Julia mean when she says three pages? And I explained what I do. I do basically three single-sided pages. Um, but I I kind of got the impression in reading this, this version that maybe I, I read it wrong. Maybe it was supposed to be three double-sided pages. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I got an answer straight from Julia Cameron Live. It is three single-sided pages. Debate no more. If you have been in this quandary like we have for so many years, if you've been debating with fellow artist wires, if you've been looking for clarity on this subject, here it is. I have, I actually screenshot the email so that I would never forget that this is not something I invented. It came straight from them. It's one, uh, one side or what I do is I open my notebook. I write one page, I write the back of that page, and then I write the, the, f- the, um, front of the next page. And then I use the back of that page for my affirmations for the week. So that was a fantastic, um, clarification for me and for everybody in the group that's reading this time because I did share it at our first meeting and everybody was like oh thank goodness I didn't know if I was doing it wrong and then some people had already started doing the uh, three double-sided pages they were so relieved to hear that you know they didn't have to keep doing that because I had done that and and for me it was taking like 40 minutes it was exhausting it was very draining Uh, And morning pages should not feel like that. They should feel like, you know, you you get them done, you get them out of the way, and you definitely write enough that you address something, but you don't feel sort of uh, emotionally drained at the end of them uh, and, and physically drained, you know. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that in this book, the, the one that I've been reading this time, The Artist's Way at Work, there was a really cool section on how the three different authors see and use morning pages uh, for their own purposes. Because that's the other thing that people are always asking, like, well, what are they for exactly? And what should I be writing? And my advice to people is, as I just said earlier, it's just like a brain drain, like whatever's in your head in the morning, you let it out. And that is different for everybody. So I just want to read this paragraph for you. And if you have the artist way at work, this is uh, just on page, what is this, 15? Yeah, page 15. It says... If your morning pages turn into glorified to-do lists, that's okay. Morning pages evolve and alter over time. For Julia, they are the source of what she calls her marching orders. Creative projects may appear as tiny seedlings. A new direction may emerge as a repeated urge to act. For Mark, they combine to-do lists with a sudden impulse to call so-and-so or with a new solution for a problem. For Catherine, 
They help her see nonlinear connections between business opportunities. Morning pages put interesting insights front and center. Watch for what Carl Jung calls synchronicity. So I love this bit where we get to hear how different morning pages look for Julia, for Mark, and for Catherine. When you read the original version of The Artist's Way, everything is through the lens of, of Julia Cameron, and she'll explain like how different students have uh, gone through, but you, you often wonder, it's like, well, that was just a student. Did they get it right? Is that what she wanted? Is that what she meant? So um, since this was from like the three authorities of this book, I thought uh, it, it kind of was more authentic in some way whatever but um those were two huge takeaways that I wanted to share and like I said I really did want to hearken back to a lot of the things that I mentioned in episode two so I will try to get the the link to the show notes in uh, a link to episode two in the show notes but if I don't just you know head back to stop writing alone episode two uh, and you can listen to my gushing over morning pages. Really, I do believe I got a little emotional too because that's how deeply they affected me. Right now, I'll be honest with you, I am only, I'm still in week one. So I'm just getting started. The, it's really funny because I was actually setting an alarm to get up really early to do morning pages before everybody else was up but because of this blackout we have all the windows open as I'm sure you can hear right now you're hearing crickets and everything outside and cars driving by but we're sleeping like this with everything open so everybody's waking up when the sun rises even before my alarm goes off so it's totally defeating the purpose um, but I'm still loving being back in the groove of things uh, other things about morning pages, just technical things uh, in this book, uh, they do mention that they recommend eight and a half by 11 size paper. I actually am using a bullskin notebook right now, which I know is not eight and a half by 11, but the lines are so tiny. I think it might be comparable in writing. And one thing that I do that is uh, a thing that Julia points out in, in the artist's way is I love stickers. So every single day that I write in my morning pages, I put a new sticker on the cover of my book. So my book starts out as this plain covered book. Right now I have a purple moleskin that I definitely did not pay full price for because I don't have that kind of moleskin money. Um, and now it's it's getting covered like there there are three different stickers on the cover there'll be another one tomorrow and by the time I finish the notebook it, it'll be all covered in stickers so it's just another way to sort of motivate you and uh, bring a little fun to the project but um yeah I highly highly recommend morning pages even if you don't take on the artist's way yet I'll say yet in case you haven't done it yet and you're not sure you're ready for a 12-week project what I often recommend and I do believe I mentioned this in episode two is that you give morning pages a try for 30 days give yourself one month of first thing you wake up and that's why I set an alarm because if I don't set an alarm all of a sudden the day takes over right so I set an alarm for a little bit earlier it usually takes me about 20 minutes to write my morning pages but I set my alarm like way early to make sure no one's awake write my morning pages um, and you just do that every single day if you do for 30 days I'd be surprised if you don't want to keep doing it a, a couple of the people that I did the artist way with last year have continued doing morning pages all year round. You know, when we were talking about getting started on morning pages, a couple of people were like, well, I never stopped. I'm just still going. And I was like, wow, that's really impressive. For me, I find them to be um, a very effective tool that I don't want to overuse. So I don't, I have not yet done that where I've committed to morning pages as like a year round thing. Um, so I can't speak to 
how that may be working for people. But for me, it works really well to take on as these, this 12 week, uh, project and then come away from it with whatever it is that I've learned, um, about myself, about my creativity, about, you know, what I want to do next in my life and then put all that stuff into action and just sort of like use that extra time to work toward the things that I picked up and then come back like I'm doing now and start over and see what new thing comes to the pages. I'm really curious to see what happens because the last time I did them and when I did actually the episode on morning pages, I didn't know this at the time. The last time I did them, there was a lot of stuff about my home I kept writing about like things I wanted to fix in the house things I wanted to like organize things that and it was just like ridiculous I was like I didn't know this was on my mind and it was getting in the way of all the other things uh so I am just taking the ride right now to see is that going to be the same thing again is it going to be something different I, I don't know ask me in a couple of weeks Okay, so um, I am going to wrap up because I only had about 26% left on this phone and I have my microphone plugged into it, so I don't know how long it's going to last. I will, I really, really hope that I have power back by Friday and that I will be on YouTube. Um, I guess if I can pull this podcast off without power, I guess I could find a way to pull off my YouTube uh, writing prompt. But even if I don't get there, if you haven't checked it out yet, Envy Rivera on YouTube every single Friday of 2020, I have been going to YouTube and sharing a short story writing prompt because I am trying to write 52 short stories in 52 weeks. So any um, follows over there, likes and subscribes, all the fun YouTube things would be uh, greatly appreciated. And hopefully I will have a new prompt for you this Friday. And speaking of likes and subscribes, if you have not subscribed to the Stop Writing Alone podcast, that of course helps loads and what helps even more is writing a review. I want to thank everybody who came out to listen last week. I am not sure what happened, but last week there was an enormous spike in downloads for Stop Writing Alone. I'm This week will tell if that was an anomaly <laughs> or what, but if you are still listening and you were new last week, thank you for coming by and thank you for coming back and to everybody that's listening whether you're here for the first week or you're here for the 81st week thank you as always for listening have a wonderful week happy writing and i will talk to you again next thursday